This was it. Hey guys, welcome to Double Dose. I'm your host, Daniel. And I'm your host, Depeche. And we're here to take you from Earth to wherever the Tesla is in outer space. Ooh. Where is that? He's gone, He's man. gone. He's, He's gone for a long time. Gone. He's not coming back. Do you think there is someone in that space suit? That's a space man. Space man. <laughs> it's a, it's moon J- man. JFK. It's moon man. JFK. <laughs> sent him in outer space. He's never coming back. God damn. Mm. Oh, man. Uh, Another episode. It's episode 10. Episode 10. Yeah. A decade of double dose. A decade of double dose. <laughs> Tony more to come. Oh, uh, wow. That's a that's a nice little milestone for us. Mm. I mean, uh, we did start off with humble beginnings and yep. look at us. 10 episodes, hundreds yeah. of thousands of views later. Hundreds of thousands of views. And we're and, killing it. Yeah. And one special down already. And whatever. Yeah, one special down. And wherever you guys are watching this, maybe you're watching it when we're at a million subscribers. Who knows? You could be looking at it, watching this from the future. And that's pretty cool. Where the moon man lands, that's what we're going to be. Maybe um, maybe in the future, mm. there's a breaking news story of an alien bringing the Tesla back from outer space and people's Google searches trigger our episode and then our podcast pops off. I want that. <laughs> I, want that I like to that. Yeah, that's what's going to take I us like to the that. moon. The moon yeah. man's going to take us to the moon. That's cool. Yeah, man. Um, you want to me with a story? I got, a, I got a story for you. Um, and it didn't happen to me directly, but it happened to uh, some friends of mine back in high school. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so sorry. So this was just out of high school, but it happened to my high school friends. Yep. Uh, so one night uh, in Western Sydney- um, there's this, so out, out in Western Sydney, there's, uh, this large parkland that stretches through several suburbs. Um, I mean, growing up, it was Western Sydney Regional Park. Yes. But what, what do they call it now? Western the, Sydney Parkland. Western Sydney Parklands. Yeah. Uh, one of, uh, one of my mates lived, uh, in a suburb that kind of borders this, this large park and all of them were, Watching a horror movie at uh, his place, and they decided, you know, like, why, why? It's, it's, and by the way, this is like um, early hours of the morning now. And they said, you know, why not just uh, spook ourselves up a little bit more and have a little walk in the park at, in, uh, at about, you know, 4 a.m. in the morning? Okay. So, you know, kind of stupid thing to do. Um, growing up, I heard several stories of just junkies and all sorts of stuff walking, being found in that, in that park at nighttime. Yep. Uh, so they were walking through and, I, this is this is them telling me this story. They hear music and they start following where this music is coming from and they start hearing yelling and talking and they peer over this little ledge, this cliff, and there's a group of people all dressed in black and pe- like playing guitar and a guy like like yelling like oh god please thank you god thank you god and just like this cult shit happening down they freak out because they start thinking that they hear rustling in the trees behind them (gasps) and a couple of them said they did see some black blurs moving from trees to trees oh my god they start sprinting away and they said those things how do they get to the park so the the friend's house um was in a suburb that um some some streets in the suburb exit into the park. Okay. So you couldn't drive into there, but like it would be a cul-de-sac and you could just walk into the park. Yes. You know, there'd be just probably a few um, wooden bollards to stop you from driving in. Okay. So it's not yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. Uh, so they start freaking out. They leg it out of there and um, they can't even understand what they've just seen. They're freaking out. Okay. Yeah. So- Puzzled about what's happening, they try to see if it happens again. So another night they go. Okay. Um, and this may have been a couple of weeks later. They go and I'm, 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 I want to make sure I, I get this story right. I think because uh, I think this happened in the same night or maybe over two nights. Um, so they go for in the same area again and they're walking. And they bump into. So they've stayed up all night till four a.m. They've stayed up till four a.m. because they they're like, okay, if this happened at this time, 
I believe it was a Saturday morning. Yes. So they stayed up Friday night, Saturday early, four, like 4 a.m. in the morning. This is happening. Um, it was either 2 or 4 a.m. Just I, I just knew it was pitch black. Um, they said they went for the walk again um, in the same area, and they remember bumping into these three people all of a sudden on in the in and this bro, this is early hours of the morning. No one's meant to be in this park. Mm. You probably could get arrested um, by the park ranger could call the cops. You know, like you're not yeah, meant to yeah, be in there. Yeah. Uh, they bump into this two uh, two guys and a girl, and they freak each other out. And they're like, "Oh my god!" Like you scare the shit out of us. And they're like, "Oh, yeah, us too." And they're like, have you heard of these people in this area? And they're like, no, we haven't heard that. And they said that they walked away and the girl had her torch on her phone on. Yes. And they had walked a considerable distance away from this group. And they said that they saw the three, um, the, the torch right in the distance on the top of this hill. And they were saying that they were walking. And then all of a sudden they heard a, the girl scream, bloody murder. They all looked up. They saw this phone light running down this hill frantically, flicker out, and then just go out. <sighs> Goosebumps, man. Goosebumps. I can see. Look at this. They're coming. Third time. No. They go, they go okay, something's I happening here. I would be here. fearing from- Wouldn't you call the cops? Well, they get, they, yeah, gets okay, involved. Dude. This, this, is where, this is where it freaks me out. This is where it freaks me out. Oh, God. They pull up at uh, a car park that's- opposite one of the main entrances to Sydney Parklands. Yep. And they start staking out this entrance. And they say they see several cars park up, pull up. People just get out and just walk straight into the park. And then they were sitting there for ages, just like wondering what's going on. A cop car pulls up beside them because they're in a, you know, full, a full car of guys, young guys, pee platers. You know, a cop car's going to be like, what are you guys doing? Cop car pulls up and he goes, what are you guys doing? Move along. And they're like, do you know that there's a bunch of people that go into the park? And the cop says, we're aware of that. Move along. <sighs> How freaky they're like is that? They're on it. How freaky is that? Dude. Um, I did try to go with them one time. It was midwinter. And I think I made it to like 2 a.m. We're at some uh, public park just waiting out the time. And it was so freezing. I'm like, nah, I'm tapping out. Like, It was like freezing and I'm like, no, I can't do it. We all bailed. Did you do it back in the day where you just tank it with shirts and jeans? Oh, like a thin jacket. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, you're yeah. just like, what are you going to do? And, um, you know, you're up, you're up till early hours of the morning doing absolutely nothing. But um, I'm like, no, nah, it's too cold. Not worth it. Um, so I, I bailed. But um, I wonder if that still happens. And that, that is very scary that that happened. At the park too, which is very weird location. You think it'd be more secluded. Someone's backyard or something they would do. I guess, you know, it's a way to be pretty discreet. Everyone just meets up there. They know the location and you can't really hear it unless you're in the park because it's a big park. It's huge. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. And what? There was a fire? I don't know if there was a fire. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can't. I don't think you can light fires in there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But you can't meet there late at night either because the but gates are closed. I know the park. You can't drive in, but you can walk in. You, yeah. You can walk, of course. Yeah. It's always the open. gates are only There's closed bollards. for cars. Yes, yes. You can just walk through the bollards if you want to walk into the park. Um, they do have park ranges, but they wouldn't be there at night. No, they they do their patrol and then lock it lock it up. Yeah, they go home at like yeah. five, and they don't even do a good job. I remember one time I got home late from a job um, that I was working, and it was like ten eight and ten p.m. and I I just sat down to like have my dinner because it was so late. I'd just been working, and I get a call from my mate, and he's like, "Hey, can I ask you for a huge favor?" I'm like, "Yeah, what's up?" And he's like, "I'm stuck in the park." They close the gate on us. I'm with a girl. We're on a date and I can't drive out. Can you pick us up and drive us home? I'm like, okay. Because I just lived around the corner. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to pick this guy up. And they were just like, pitch black coming out of the park. I had to just drive him home. I don't even know this girl. It's pretty funny. Yeah. 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 Wow. I, I am really freaked out by that story in terms of the person screaming and running away. Yeah. I mean- That uh, would probably scare me the most. Yeah. The girl. Yeah. 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 I'd probably call the cops just I, I wouldn't know what spot. happened. And a lot, a lot- uh, I mean, I don't want to get too dark on this podcast, but a lot has gone down in that park. Um, okay. I am aware of a suicide that happened in there as well. Okay. Um, for someone that I went to high school with, it's 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 an old it's an old park. It's been there for a long time, and a lot of a lot of stories. I'm sure yeah, a lot of people in the a, area dude, have stories about it. It's a big it. open park. Shit like that happens all the time. It's and it's so big. It stretches on for what would you say? It's massive. Twenty thirty kilometers. Yeah, across. 
um, like it goes from where we um, out out to like where I am to like you know right up north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it goes quite a bit down south too. It does go more south as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a very big park. It's really huge. It's one of the biggest parklands in Western Sydney. It's monstrous. It's massive. Um, uh, my story that I have is, is pretty <laughs> my neuralized my butthole <laughs> slash my butt um, I just need to check your asshole <laughs> you remember that episode what South Park they're like TSA and these are just two two um, African American girls and they're like ah right, sir just pull your pants down I just need to check yeah, your yeah, asshole yeah they're taking this shit oh man that's horrible they're so fucked up I love it so my story is actually pretty grim. I won't go into huge details, but it shocked me when I saw it. Was, right. uh, thank God it didn't traumatize me, but it's definitely something that I've definitely remembered was I was walking through the park one day and um, it was in, it was on my way to work. I had to walk through a park near my house and I see a bunch of cops just standing in the park for no reason. This was like a briskly morning walk in the middle of maybe autumn or something. Mm. And they're standing right near a tarp under oh a shelter. God. And I look at the tarp and, dude, it wasn't even covered well. And there was a straight up dead person. Holy crap. And I fully saw them. Their face and everything. Everything. But as soon as I saw it, I was like, well, I knew what it was. And I had the quick shock of, I don't know if you've ever seen, but if you sometimes if you get caught off guard and you see a dead animal, it yeah. kind of shocks you. Have yeah. you seen that? Has that ever happened to you? I saw a dead cat once like and I was like, whoa, because its face was so freaky in the moment of death because mm-hmm. it had been run over yeah. and it was dead on the road. Yeah. But when I saw it, its face being like hor- horrified in that moment scared very scary, me. It was very, very scary. scary to see. It's very, it, it's very upsetting. Yeah, it's see. very confronting. Yeah. And I saw this person who was clearly probably died of drugs or something. They were so thin. Wow. I didn't look at their face, but I saw I was like, oh, it's a body. And I- Dude, the, the thing barely covered him. Jeez. It was just really poorly, like half draped over his arm and his leg, but you fully saw the face, everything out there. And I, I just thought, you got to let people know, man. Like put some tape up and make them walk around. That's heavy, man. Oh, man. I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I feel like most people go through their life without ever seeing anything like that. So yeah. it's crazy that you saw that. It, it was pretty full on. But luckily I didn't. I didn't feel the trauma like kick in in that moment. It was more, I saw it and was like, Bleep. it's like those people that know that you see them on the CCTV and they see someone's going to be run over by a train and they just run the opposite direction because they don't want to see it. Mm-mm. It was like that. I was like, well, and then I looked away. Wow. But pretty grim, but I, 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 you know, shit happens in parks, man. Yeah. It, uh, it all goes down in the park. Yeah. I did want to tell you something funny though than what yeah. I wanted to mention before. Was let's, uh, that, let's lighten it up so a little bit. So we had a survey done at work that uh, we they were talking about unconscious bias, right? You know, an unconscious bias is like, for instance, you might be like, um, or for instance, you might be more drawn to a preference person that you find attractive. So you might say, I I give unconsciously give right. better treatment to mm-hmm. a person I find attractive versus who a person who I don't okay. find it unattractive. Right. right. Something familiar. Familiarity. Yeah, okay. It might be same race usually yeah, a lot yeah. of the time. Like, you know, if people who are unconsciously biased, everyone is to a degree. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's in our DNA to be like, to fit in with clans, to, yes. to be tribal. So you might be racist towards white, like white people or black people or whoever you are, um, you know, in, in your circumstance, whatever the case is. And, Unconscious bias they were testing was the size of people. Right. Right. So this is is this for like uh it's a training. HR? It was a hey, it was, was it a like- kind of compulsory training in terms of this is what you need to be mindful of. It's just to cover their ass for lawsuits. It sounds say, like hey, we did the training, we can't get sued for this shit. Yeah. It's that person's fault. Classic corporate thing to do. Classic corporate, right? So the training was very weird. You had to do you had to you saw a so there was a word and then you had to remember a word and then link it with a matching word and an image of a person would flash between the between the the words, right? Right. So you would see maybe, you know, the word um like the word might be animals. She's bigger. You, the word might be animals and you have to say animals would go to the person who's big and the 
the the electronics would go to the person who's um, who's skinnier. So, so you have oh, to so categorize it's like, it's like by a drag, like a size. Drag and drop thing. No, no, it was a button. It was like press Q, press P on your keyboard. So it was like left and right. So one was for this category who are associated with the big people, right. press, okay, press this you. button. And then you. the people who are categorized with this people, press um, P. So you would just be sending the categories off for the words, mm. matching with the people and the and the, the preference of their size. And the idea was that you you would prioritize in your brain the preference that you had in your mind to the category that you preferred. So, for instance, if you like, if you are attracted to skinny people, then you would most likely be able to get the category for the skinny people faster than you'll be able to categorize the thing for the larger people. Right. Right. I ended up testing preference for moderately for fat people. This is like how you, what you're more subconsciously inclined to? I subconsciously treated bigger people better than I treated skinnier people. Interesting. And I laughed because I'm like, I can relate to that. I like my women thick. Right. right. <laughs> I like them thickness. Right? <laughs> okay. Like, okay. I don't like, like I, when I see a very thin woman on TV, it grosses me out. I'm like, right. I can't see the skeleton, man. I cannot be seeing skeletons. I got to be seeing some curves. That, like, I got to be seeing some, some, some roundness to that person. It's but, definitely obviously like uh, exposure to you, how you're brought up, what you find attractive as well. I don't know why. It's, I think it's my environment. parents are very thin. There might be something that just puts you off maybe um, thinner people. Could yeah, be something but then like I, but then so become, deep. It could be so yeah, deep. Yeah, it's, I would love to know what it made what made me like that. Interesting. But anyway, so I was in the one percent. Wow! It, wow! Okay. I was one percent of mm. people tested that they were moderate preference for, and they didn't even use the correct words. They just said fat mm. is how they worded it. They're like yeah. fat people. Yeah. I'm like that's fucking horrible. That's to very call them, vague but, as well. Yeah. It's just saying like, like yeah. I thought that was like an incorrect term to yeah. to use anyway. But yeah. So I have a moderate preference for fat people. Okay. Well, I don't like saying fat. Sorry. I have a moderate preference for big people. All inclusive. I I no. I I discriminated against oh, the skinnies. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So okay. I I subconsciously was treating the people who are skinny worse. Interesting. I treated big people better than I treated the skinny people. Yeah. The opposite of what that's such an interesting else. And 97% uh, thing to do people, at work. That, I know, but ninety-seven percent of people tested. Positive for just they preference skinny people, mm. which uh, whatever. I don't know why we had to do that training. It was very weird. It almost feels like you were test subjects for something like for like a, a study that's outside of your work. Like they just wanted you as, t- as test subjects to find out in the work fa- in the workplace. What do most people? How how do they treat uh, fat people versus skinny people type of thing? Or like you know what are people's preferences? Mm. It doesn't feel like it has any relation to a business. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what the hell they were doing, but I feel like it was the moderate, the un- unconscious bias training. Because what do you, what, as a business, what are you going to get from that? Because then like, okay, say, wh- wh- like, why stop there? Why be like, uh, now let's do the difference between long haired people and short haired people or people that wear glasses and don't wear glasses. Like, you know, where do you draw the line at these tests? Yeah, I have no idea. It's Very just interesting. It's just to cover their ass. There was a gambling one. It's just like, you can't take bribes and a bribe is this. Oh yeah. That- Anti-bribery like, oh, act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. They love that stuff. Yeah. Because tick all the boxes. Tick all the boxes. And then if you take the thing- Job's done. done trained. Yeah, we've done our training. All of our colleagues know what to do. Yeah. Our company's safe. And it was this very and if weird if you don't videos. fill out that, that census and fill out that form, you're fired. I think I just rem- I just didn't fill out like several of them and they kept asking me and I just didn't yeah. do it. Do you want to work for this company? Put your answers Fill out that shit. Anonymously. Make sure you gamble responsibly. Yeah. Put it you got to gamble- you got to know you're sealing your life away when you do, do it. Do you even understand the implications of phishing online? You will destroy our company if you don't know what fake emails look like. Yeah. I've heard a stat that I think I think out of the only two addictions in the world that pretty much un, you cannot beat. And I think one of them is gambling. I think You I heard can't this, beat. Yeah. It's like impossible to overcome it or something. Look, I will say this, and I won't. I won't go into too much detail because um, it is responsible of me. But I have worked in a club and seen gambling addiction, and it is severe. Yeah, it's it crazy. Is very, I, I very know intense. people have said it's 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 very bad. I saw some behaviors that I. It's, you think you think that like it's something in a movie, 
but it's very common. Yep. It's very it's, horrible. it's very bad addiction. And it's literally life destroying yep. on so many levels. Yep. It's very bad. I um uh my brother used to work at a pub and would tell me that he would just see the oldies come in, feeding in the hundreds. Yeah. Feeding in the hundreds, go back to the machine, feed in the hundreds, feed in the hundreds. I'm like, whoa, if you just fed those hundreds into a savings account, man, you'd be loaded. Yeah. Very scary. It's uh in their head they they con- they don't I, think they're that far. I think I've done pokies three times in my life. I'd say I'm the same. And I've won once. I've never won. I put in five dollars and go boop, boop, boop. Bye. See you later. I think when I, I was mean- eighteen, I did it a couple of times. When you know you're just going out for beers with the boys at like your local sports club. And um I remember doing it a couple of times and in my head I'm like, if I've lost two or three times, I would rather put this money to beer hundred percent than yeah. hope that I can buy more beer with a potential winning. The chance Especially of you like, winning. I would hundred percent rather gamble with a real person dealing me cards that I know it's at least yeah. like a, a randomized. A machine who why would you why would you think a machine is in your favor? Totally. It's so bizarre for me to be- for, I can't believe this stuff is legal. I can't believe people go to a machine thinking they have a chance. My friend came from Brazil and said, gambling is illegal there. I can't believe how, how much it's on TV here. Yeah, right. He said, you, you cannot have an ad on it on television. No one can do it. It's very strange because in Australia, I mean, oh, I, can, I guess I can only speak for New South Wales. Um, it's funny how- acceptable gambling is and how strict the league leg- legalities around it are. It's almost like we 100% love it because it brings us money, but we got to look like we're super strict about it. Yeah. But it's- all the same, at the same time, keep gambling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just keep spending the money. Keep spending the money, but I'm just letting, telling you we're serious about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's a shame. I really don't like that. Um, It's- I also thought it was shit when they pulled the Greyhound racing and then they bring it back. Yeah. They just said, nah, we're, we're, we're pulling it out, but not nah, too many people kicked up a stink. We're putting those motherfuckers back to work. My livelihood. I need to smack one, kill more dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did you hear the story of the, the man disguised as an old woman that attacked the Mona Lisa with a cake? I heard, yeah, I saw this. You saw uh, it. And w- weren't they like spouting something as they were getting carried I got, out? <laughs> yeah. I got the exact line ready if you want. Yeah, go for it. Think about the earth. There are people who are destroying earth. Think about it. All the artists tell you to think about earth. All the artists think about the earth. That's why I did this. Think about the planet, shouted the, the disguised man as he was escorted out of the museum by security. The The... the the picture was fine. They've got it behind bulletproof glass yeah. because it was attacked one time when someone threw a rock at it and chipped it. Right. Yeah. Um, for me, that person 100% was on social media way too much, stuck in an echo chamber about all the things that are bad that's happening to the earth, and they're like, i got to do something about this. Ah. And they got to the point where they're like, that's it. i got to take a stand. i got to do something. i gotta, I got to change the world Yeah. because people was- aren't listening to me. Man, if he, if he, uh, if that wasn't behind glass, he would have wrecked it. Yeah, big time. He disguised as an old woman in a wheelchair. And he jumped. Do you even, up do you even think the real Mona Lisa is on display? That is the real Mona Lisa. No, I think my my partner said that the real Mona Lisa was like tiny. And it is. They it's had not to, very big. No, it was. It was a very small one, and then um, the it got stolen or something, and then there's a recreation made, and that's the recreation we're looking at. I don't know. No, I do believe the Mona Lisa was stolen at one point in history, but it was returned. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's very small though, isn't it? Yeah. No, look, his head's there. It's big. My partner said the original one is small. Quite small. It's smaller than people think. think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well. Don't know. Uh, but I thought that was hilarious. Why with a cake? I did this for the planet. Think about the planet. You wow. know what I think he was trying to make a statement of, but came off like a moron, was- I think he was trying to make a statement of why are we putting such a high price on something like this? Why is something just, like this regarded as the pinnacle of existence? I think it's just, dude. I I know I get I get where he's coming from, but no, it's just like a vegan going into KFC and starting to preach veganism. No, you're no one. You're not in the place where people give a shit. You're not in the right place where people give a shit about your your what your what you care about. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're only going to repel people away from your ideas, so you got to approach it in a different way. 
You can't just go attacking things and assume. Well, there's people there's no way you can just sway a group of people to an ideology in an instant. Yep. You can only <laughs> think t- about the earth. You can only tend to the garden you can touch. Yes, exactly. You, you, in a cl- cl- small group of friends, you could probably convince most of them about the way how you feel and probably change some people's minds. But you, there's no way you can run in the middle of a stream and be like, everybody here listening right now, think about the planet. And they're, and they're all going to be like, yeah, that guy really does raise a good point. I'm going to- That's gonna take, very 1700s I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride my vibes. Bike. I'm going to ride my bike to, 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 tomorrow. Save the planet. Yeah. Starts Just because education. of what he said. Starts with ed- education. I wonder if he got- I, I don't, The thing wasn't damaged, so I don't think he uh, He would- Probably got a fine. Yeah, maybe a slap on the wrist type thing. Um, Dude, he, <laughs> saying that he dressed up as an old woman reminded me of this story. And this is such a gross story, man. And look- it ties into the whole thing that we're talking about with fetishes uh, a couple of episodes ago. But uh, I have a friend of mine who, he he's a surveyor. Okay. And he got called out to this company, this business, to survey it. When he entered, he did realize it was a brothel. But this brothel specialized in just old women. How old? So old that they said that their oldest was like 80 something. And the only reason she stopped was she couldn't get up the stairs anymore. <laughs> holy shit. And I was like, holy crap, dude. I can't believe that. They should have put them one of the elevators. Yeah. Like, Hold on, honey. Yeah. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and as she's slowly going up the stairs, she's sliding Start up her skirt. jerking it. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I can't believe, I can't believe that that's that popular. 80? Yeah, yeah. Whoa! Like, no. I can only picture that you're retired and you want to do something. I can't imagine that you want to do it for money at that age. Would you just oh. be like, I'm retired, I'm like... I'm, I'm- Dude, people love sex. At that age? Where's your sex oh. drive? Some people got it, man. <laughs> Some people have got a I, look, problem with it. I was... um Sex addicts. At that age? You can gamble at any age. I get age. the customers, but... You can gamble at any age. What if people have got a mad fetish of being way older than them and they're banging a young person? Then everyone's young when you're 80. Um, I was surprised that that exists, uh, that, that there's such a demand for what that. What was the clientele like? Sorry, what was the clientele like? Oh, I mean, he doesn't know. Oh, okay. He, he was only asking because like, you know, small talk, I guess. Oh. Yeah. But um, uh, I can't believe that it's popular enough for a business to have that as its niche. Anything's a niche, man. You- you make it, the people will come. Surely this is about- one, but like, I can't imagine that's a free, like, a common thing. How many old people out there just been like, yeah, I want a hook? Who knows? Wow. Don't, you can't make any assumptions in this world, man. It's <laughs> crazy. People fell in selling farts. That is true. That hey, is true. You can do anything. If I was old, I'd, I'd probably be fighting a lot. What so. if your grandma came up to you one day? Oh, don't said, even go there, dude. Said, don't even go there. Him, so gross. Sonny, you know what I really want to do? Get some young dong. No way, dude. I'd be like- Get it, grandma. You do it, baby. You're, you're so it. disrespectful. So disrespectful, <laughs> grandma. Go back to go bed. Go into the naughty corner, you fucking bitch. <laughs> go, back, go back to bed. No. You don't have that relationship with your grandma? No way. Okay. Well, I don't think so either. But <laughs> if my grandma was like, hey, I'm going to get back out there, start. Your grandma is way more mobile than my grandma. Probably younger. How old's your grandma? Uh, both of them. Oh, yeah. Both of them in the late 80s. Oh, okay. Wow. Pretty old. My oh, grandma's yeah. like 75. She's young. Uh, She's a young grandma. Oh, well, nearly 80. Yeah. Could be... Getting on the level with that woman. She's not that much older than my dad. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But you're the youngest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but like, if your grandma, well, you know, my partner would be all about that. You got to just be supportive of your family, no matter what crazy shit they I want. I could not do that, man. I, I think if my grandma, not that she said I'm going to be a fucking prostitute, but. Um, if my grandma was like, I'm going to get on Tinder, I would have been like, hell yeah, you go for it. Oh, yeah. If they want to like start dating, yeah, go for it. Why not? Yeah, but what if they're like, I only want to hook up? Well, I, first of all, I don't even know why my grandma would be telling me this. Let's say in the bizarre world. No, I don't want to think about this bizarre world. <laughs> I don't world. want my mind to go there. No it's going to shatter. No way, dude. Okay. 
I think I'd be supportive of my grandma and say, you have needs too. Okay. I would, genuinely. (laughs) You want to go smash a dong? Okay. Oh, geez. I couldn't even, I don't even want to talk about that. That's so, I can't. I can't. Maybe you got to take a small, smaller step though. You don't just go up to your grandma who you've been really formal with your whole life and go, hey, grandma, you getting any tail? That's no not how way, it works. No way, dude. No you way. You got to just, you got to ease into it a long time, a couple of years of, of growth. Interesting. What else? Yeah. But damn, man, 80 year old. Hey, but I've I heard know, I stories think it was like online. Like 80s or 90s. There was a guy I read, he had a fetish for banging old chicks. Well, it and exists, right? That's, what that, that's why yeah, this business yeah. exists. Dude, he was banging 90-year-olds. And he Jeez. was showing them and proud of them. And then in the video, he's got his arm around one of them and then they full make out with so much tongue. You know, And they were pretty rough. I guess for him, he had would have a, such a large selection because they'd be all mainly widows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to be fair, I'm sure at that age, you're like, if I can pull, the dude was in his 20s. And I'm sure if those old bags are going, well, I can pull a 20 year old, that'd be pretty great. Do you think that's. Like, think about it. If you're uh, 90 fucking years old and a 20 year old girl came up to you and your wife's dead or whatever, and you're like, she's like, I want to fuck you, you'd probably be like, all right, fine. Get me some Viagra. Nothing's working. Yeah. <laughs> um,. I don't even know where I was going to go with that, but um, it's somewhere dark. Oh yeah, I was going to say, is that um, is that something deeper, or is it a fetish? That's what's the way the line can be drawn, right? It's like I think I am f- sixty years old, older than you. I what don't. Do I, do? I don't think that's a fetish. I think there's something going on there. Some mental health issue. Yeah. Uh, well, no, not. It, I just think there's like there's definitely deeper issues there. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's a fetish. Our society isn't ready for such power. The, 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 those dudes are tapping into something we're, we, we don't know what we don't, we're yeah, not aware of I, I, well maybe we don't need to be aware of it it's too much too I don't, much I don't want to I don't want to be aware of it that I is, don't um, want to be it's like I was 60 when you were born I don't like <laughs> the idea of it at all no yeah yeah same but hey it exists and who are we to say though at the end of the day that you can't love this or have this emotions with this person just because of their age You're not, you're not entertaining it. <laughs> I don't even want to think about it, dude. I can't even think about oh, it. Oh, that's, that's, some, that's some shit right there. Some deep shit. You're too much. I don't want to think of my grandma like this. I just don't. Yeah. Okay. I don't, want, I don't even want to have that, the, the, my grandma and this, this topic together. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Just block it out, man. I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I keep bringing I you back. God. Neuralize it. Do, 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 do. Ow, it's at me again. Fuck this thing. Karma, dude, karma. <laughs> try. Go no, on. dude. This is the episode. This is Guys, the Guys, earlier, fucking- Daniel tried, got me to try and zap my face on his mic. See, it's And stopped. I tried it. I don't know. Is it because I changed position? I don't know. Fuck this thing. Dude, I, I, I gave it a go. And because it doesn't happen, that freaks me out more than it happening itself. It's like when you go on those- Like I'm trying to make out It's like when you're on those roller coasters <gasps> and they hit the peak and you don't know when you're going to drop. And the the feeling of waiting freaks you out more than the drop itself. Yeah, yeah. That's what it feels but like. But the zap is like, it just like tingles. Like, it's like, like a scratch. Ow. It just catches me off surprise. I don't know why you're trying to make out with your mic so much. A very interesting group of people at my college. And when I mean group, I don't mean um, like five or six people. I mean like the, the, the overall demographic of people there. Uh, just because of what I was studying, uh, it was an interesting Interesting group of people. Yes. Okay. Um, there was this girl. I remember one one lesson. Um, so we had graphics tablets, drawing yep. tablets, mm-hmm. um, and they weren't ours. Obviously, they were the the colleges. I remember one lesson. I was just working away, and I look over, and she's reaching into her bag. Mind you, this is um, probably nine thirty in the morning. Reaches into her bag, pulls out a McDonald's burger. That wouldn't have been purchased that day because it was. This is before all day breakfast. Yes. Or, or, or even ordering other things at breakfast time. Yes. So she's got this day old burger. She takes it out, takes a couple of bites, and then just rests it on the graphics tablet like it's a plate. And I was <laughs> like, "What the? F- 
is going on right now? You are so germophobic. I like how, dude. Imagine like someone had to use that graphics tablet and there's just McDonald's grease all over it. Like, how do you how do you grow up just being like, I think I'll just leave my burger on this keyboard. Yeah, yeah. Well, people are filthy. It's so filthy. I I was just like, this is so disgusting. <laughs> how do you live at home? I like how just resting it on the graphics tablet is more concerning to you than a day old burger of McDonald's. That, that shit's going to be fine in 50 years time. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's <laughs> true. Um, but that that was so freaking disgusting, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're a, you're a big germaphobe. Like, you can't- You, you would be like freaky. Like, okay- Big time, dude. The other day at work, um, someone needed a pen from me and I gave them my pen. They put it in their mouth. Dude, I, I looked over and the, they started bending the clippy part of the pen lid back. And I'm like, okay, well, it's useless now because okay, <laughs> I want I want my shit to work. Yeah. And then I look over again and they're just suckling on the bit that they bent back. I'm like, oh, you keep, keep it. I, it's not mine anymore. It's yours. Like- <laughs> Hey, it was my father's pen. What if it was really important? I just don't understand how these people- Sucking on your pen. Sucking on my pen. You know what? My it's one a black pen. It's a subconscious habit to the point where they're not even thinking that they've- um, That what they're touching is not theirs. I know. Uh, and they didn't return it, which annoyed me as well. But I, at the same time, I wouldn't want it back. You yeah. should have gone up to them. By the way, I saw you slobbering on my pen. You can keep it. Also, you're a bitch. <laughs> and just slap them on the back of the head and walk out. Fuck it. Uh, fucking dude, time to clap uh, their head in that, half. That was so gross. And um, yeah. What, what is up with people doing this weird shit? Well, people are strange, my friend. We all know this. They, I think George Carlin said it. Think how dumb the average person is, and then remember half of those people are dumber than that. <sighs> yeah, that's it's it's it's, it's a scary thought. It's worrying. And they're the happiest. Ignorance is bliss, my friend. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I was just dumber, so I couldn't. Me too, I didn't man. Have much stress in my life. You would just be so carefree. Ignorance is truly bliss. <laughs> it is, dude. It is. Oh, well. Make me stupid. You... Nah, don't, don't. Careful what you wish for, man. Nah, yeah, true, true. You'll like be in a brain accident or something. Nah, I don't want that. Nah, exactly. Uh, I don't want that. I oh, speaking of brains. Did you ever hear, hear about the guy that had uh, his brain cut in half? You ever heard about this procedure? Like a left side, right side cut yeah, half? Yeah, they split the hemispheres. <laughs> no. You've never heard of this? No. It's a real procedure. So it has something to do with, I think, seizures. And so they the way they can solve it is they cut the they cut the um the brain in half. They half like a mandarin. Yep. They just cut the link between it and then it is literally like having two brains in a head. How does that work? So the right side and the left side of the body then work completely independently. How are your thoughts? Are they the same? No, they're completely different. So it really messes with your life. So one guy gets his, he goes to pay for something, gets his wallet out of his pocket, pulls his pocket, uh, pulls his wallet out, grabs the money with his left hand instead of paying for the money with the person, puts the money in his other pocket and goes, Thank you. They go, You didn't pay me. You put it in my pocket. You put it in your pocket. And the other side of the brain, if they're, even can see that person with the right side of their brain and they can't see them with their left, it's like they don't exist to this side, to the other side of the brain. Why is this a good procedure to do? It sounds like uh, it's, it's just a bad it's a very, life. It's, it's, a, it's only done in a desperate situation when right. I think that their life is getting really affected by maybe seizures or something. Are you the same person after that though? No, you're pretty different. And so there was this study done where this guy put a mirror like this, right? And he would- Daniel's See, putting a mirror right in front of yeah, his face. So, so, sorry, so it's the, like um, left divide, side, right side. Put your hand to divide your eyeballs in half. So it's like you're crowdy chopping your head in half. That's what it's like. He had a mirror. Sorry, not a mirror. He had a divider put and he had to look with his left eye and draw what he saw with his, with his uh, right, right hand. hand. Mm-hmm. And when he looked at what he was drawing with his right eye, he couldn't distinguish what it was. He was like, what are you looking at? And he's like, I have no idea until he completed the drawing. And then he was like, I think it's this. And then he moved his head around and would say, ah, yes, it's a chair. So it's like two minds are working separately in one head. So he couldn't look at it with his left eye. And then understand it with his left body. I don't understand that because if he was able to make the connection from the left eye to the, the fact that he has to draw with his right side. That yeah. means there's a communication from left to the right. 
So no, why no, no. couldn't it communicate? It's because the left side of your brain is controlled by the right side of your body. Remember how your brain is flipped? Mm-hmm. That's what was happening. You're right. I think the ner- your eyeballs are connected differently, though. It was very bizarre. You can watch a you can watch a small video on it. Yeah, the guy was completely being tricked by his own body, and yeah. say he could he could not understand what he was drawing until it was completed, and he'd be like, "I think it's that," and then because one of the parts in the brain that was responsible for memory was maybe on the right side. Yeah, it was a very interesting thing. I forget what it was called. That because- um, that just reminded me. I remember seeing this um little documentary about this person that um instead of sleepwalking. He sleep draws, and he ha- and oh, I think it was a, I can't remember if it was a guy or a girl, but um they have these elaborate paintings that they used to do, and when they woke up they wouldn't be able to explain the painting, or even remember doing it at all. Are and they, they good? I'll try and find I'll try and find a photo of it. Okay. Well, what I also wanted to say was that when he pulled it out with his right hand and p- went to pay for the money he came up with a fabricated story about why he already paid for them. Or he said, I was taking change from you and then I gave you the money and blah, blah, blah. So the brain that was responsible, the the portion of your brain that was responsible for reasoning was separated to the portion of the brain that was responsible for what you were doing. Right. So he would do something and it was the opposite of what he needed to do, but then his brain would reason and come up with some sort of story about what he had just done. Oh, no, I just took the change and put it in my other side of the pocket, but mm. he didn't even take any money. Yeah, right. So the brain, then it was like two people in one body. It's, it's kind great. of sad. It's, that, it's kind of sad that, I mean, imagine voluntarily doing a procedure where you're like, I might not be the same person coming out. Yeah, but you it's maybe even, that or no quality of life at all. But how do you even, uh, how, how is he even aware that he's the same person? Exactly, man. I it's think like he getting was, lobotomy. Kind of, but I'm pretty sure his quality of life was almost nothing without the procedure. You wouldn't do it unless it's that. Yeah, true. Why, why are you... Ow, shit! Ah, fuck Guys, this thing. Tourette's. Ow! Tourette's. Damn it. See, and then it stops. It's like it's charging up. It's all good, Go, dude. go, go. No, I'm not going to touch that. I'm not touching I'm it. Juicing it up. I'm no, juicing dude, it I'm up. So I'm juicing scared. it up. Come on. Those reactions were harsh, dude. You think uh, I'm going to touch just, that now? It catches me off guard. I'm still doing it. Yep, it's still doing it. Come on, do it. No you way. You can hear it. Listen. Hear that little noise? I can't hear that. <laughs> Not by the hairs of my chin chin chin. <laughs> um, I can't find um, this person's art. Um, I remember it being a bit psychedelic looking. Hemispherectomy. Hemispherectomy. As brain removed and disconnected from the other half, is performed on children and adults who have seizures and don't respond to medicine. After your surgery, your child has to stay in hospital for five to seven days and go through a lot of rehabilitation. Have you seen one of those procedures uh, for those people that have to have a um, prosthetic leg and what they do to the foot? Oh, you mean where they sew it backwards yeah. onto the knee? Shit's crazy, right? I I, I understand that it's, it, 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 helps, like a knee. It, it helps with the way the, the leg works, yeah. but wow. Yeah. Um, I would rather see, I mean, I know this is so bad of me to say, but it's like, I think it's just, it's, I guess it's some sort of, it's like a body horror to see a foot backwards. Um, you, where you, if you were to see an amputated leg, you'd be like, oh, the person's amputated leg. But to see a foot backwards, you'd be like, holy crap. Scare you almost. Yeah. It looks so painful. It's apparently not. It's apparently way less painful mm. than having the nub. I think, yeah, because you have a lot more leverage. Yeah, you have it's something. quite stronger that, that yeah, way. You, you have a lot more strength. Your foot's strong as hell. It carries you all day. Yeah, yeah. Think about it. It's wow. just, it's carrying you, but just up higher. I prefer that over the nub. People say the nub is so painful. Yeah, I heard that it's very also, painful. Also, that would probably help a lot with nerve pain as well. Because hmm. what I've heard from the um, – when you when you get a uh, some sort of injury where you, your hand's cut off or something, you, the nerve pain is unbearable. Some people wake up in the middle of the night screaming like they're on fire, hmm. you know, because for the, the injury, it's like the nerves haven't been severed correctly. Oh, my God. So they're just in constant pain. That sounds constant terrible. Pain. That sounds terrible. Um, so I'm pretty sure that procedure would help massively with the nerve damage because the nerves then fuse back together with the other foot. Yeah. yeah. I'd prefer that a hundred times over that. Yeah. I think we're at the limit, boy. That's it. That was an easy, relaxing one. Yeah, it's pretty chill. We hope you guys enjoyed this Double Dose podcast today for our very chill episode. 
of relaxations with the depression, Daniel. Smooth <laughs> double dose podcast. <laughs> yes. Smooth double dose podcast. You'll only get it if you're Australian. Otherwise, yeah. Fuck you all. Uh, but thank <laughs> no. you for listening to episode 10, a very laid back episode. And um, we look forward to seeing you again on episode 11. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.